This fortress is being attacked by a legion of 200,000 soldiers, while it only has an army of 5,000 men to defend itself. However, the small army is about to do something incredible in the face of these impossible odds. The Emperor of the Tang Empire, Tai Zong, is referred to as the God of War, and he has arrived to attack and conquer the country of Goguryeo with 200,000 men. The general of Goguryeo, Yan, has decided to face Tai Zong's forces with 150, 0, 0 of his own men at Mount Jupal, and the fate of the country depends on this battle. Among those leading the charge from Yan's forces is a soldier named Samuel and his brother, a woman who is said to be a clairvoyant that can talk to the gods of Goguryeo, is watching the battle intently. At first, it looks Yon's army have the upper hand in the battle, but then, a separate legion of Taizong's forces appears from the rear and surrounds Yon's army. Yon's army starts getting brutally slaughtered, but Samuel and his brother fight valiantly. The clairvoyant says that she has already been shown a vision of this defeat. Yon tells his army to retreat, and Samuel's brother gets killed while trying to inform everyone of the order. Defeated and devastated, Yon's army makes its way back to their home. Samuel is carrying his brother on his back, and Yeon orders him to drop the dead body. Samuel cries as he comes to term with the reality. Tai Zong has captured the clairvoyant. She has with her a special bow and arrow, which is a holy relic of the country of Goguryeo. It is said that no one can wield this bow. Tai Zong tries to stretch it and fails as well. He asks his generals what is the next conquest on their way to the capital of Goguryeo, and they tell him it's the fortress of Ansi. They inform him that the commander of Ansi, Yang, does not follow General Yon's orders and is regarded as a traitor by the country of Goguryeo. Hence, the conquest will be easy, because Yang will have no support from the capital. Meanwhile, Yon orders Samul to enter Ansi and kill Yang, because he and his armies refuse to join Yon at the Battle of Mount Jupal, which has possibly cost them the entire war. Samul is perfect for this job because he previously belonged to Ansi and can infiltrate the fortress. Samul says that killing Yang will leave the Ansi people vulnerable against Tai Zong's armies, and Yan says that as long as the Ansi people follow Yang, they are all traitors anyway. Let them die. He says they will abandon Ansi and make their final stand against Tai Zong in the capital. Samul sets off for Ansi. On the way to Ansi, Samul meets two lost Goguryeo soldiers who ask to join him on the mission to kill Yang. As the three travel, they come across two men trying to get their donkey cart out of the mud. After helping them, Samul asks one of them to direct him to Yang, the commander of Ansi. The man reveals that he is Yang himself. The other two soldiers recklessly try to attack Yang, but his general Chu easily defeats and kills them. He goes for Samul next, but Samuel says that he is from Ansi and claims that people there know him. Yang tells Chu to take Samuel prisoner so he can question him later. Chu knocks Samuel out. Samuel wakes up and finds that they have arrived at the fortress of Ansi. Yang enters his home and is told that he is needed at the market. He arrives at the market to find that two of his lieutenants, Pung and Hualbo, are fighting. He orders them to stop, and they immediately do. He is clearly very well respected. Samul arrives to be questioned by Yang, and Yang immediately suspects that Samul is a spy sent to kill him. He says that he is aware Yan calls him a traitor and wants him dead. Samul says that he was chased to Ansi by Taizong's armies, and now he wants to fight alongside them. Yang considers him for a moment. Next, Yang introduces Samul to his generals, and says that if he wants to fight with them, he will carry the commander's flag into battle, which notifies the army of the commander's position at all times. At night, Samuel takes out his dagger and follows Yang as he walks through deserted streets. He finds that Yang is going to the house of a common couple that has recently had a baby. He gives the couple food and drink and adores their baby. He asks the couple what they have named the little one, and they reveal that they have named the boy after him. Samuel notices that the people of Ansi have incredible respect and love for Yang. Next morning, Samuel sees Yang working alongside the common people and an old man tells him that the people of Ansi see Yang as the fortress itself. He is Ansi. Yang asks Chu where his general Paso is, and Chu replies that he must still be asleep. Something clicks in Yang's head. He arrives at Paso's house and finds his sister, Becca, there. She's been naughty. Yang gets angry and chases after Paso with a bow and arrow, but Becca steps up to defend him. Yang says he's worried that one of them might die in the coming war, 
which would be very hard for the other, but Becca says that they are prepared for this. Just then, a horn sounds, and Yang climbs the fortress wall to find that Taizong has sent a recon unit. His army is close. The Anxi army prepares to defend the fortress. Yang tells Samul to trim his beard before the battle, and Samul becomes nervous as this is the perfect chance to kill Yang and complete his mission. Almost as if he's read Samul's mind, Yang says now is not the time. He says Samul will get plenty of chances to kill him later. Samul is shocked at how easily Yang has him figured out. Taizong's army arrives, and it consists of 200,000 men and plenty of siege weapons. On the other hand, Ansi's army only has 5,000 men. Yang can tell the Ansi men are nervous, and he gives them a rousing speech, reminding them what they are fighting for. Taizong admires Yang for having a lot of heart. The battle begins, and Taizong's army throws massive rocks at the Ansi fortress. Despite the rocks doing much damage, the structural integrity of the walls remains intact, because the walls are filled with sand. Taizong orders his army to begin climbing the walls, and the real fighting begins. The massive siege ladders of the Taizong army provide them with easy access into the fortress, but Yang's men fight valiantly. The cavalries of Becca and Paso patiently wait for Yang's signal, as they have complete faith in their commander. After some fighting, Yang gives them the signal to flank the enemy from both sides. Meanwhile, Taizong's army starts breaking down the fortress door. They manage to enter but walk straight into a trap set by Yang. Atop the fortress wall, Yang's army make a close formation and push Taizong's men over the edge. Yang gives the order to bring out huge crossbows which are used to topple the siege ladders. With no way left to climb the walls, Taizong has no choice but to order a retreat. Against all odds, Ansi has repelled Taizong's army. Samul is shocked. Later at night, Samul has a dream in which he remembers the loss at Mount Jupal and sees Yon calling him a traitor. He remembers his mission. Yang arrives in his room and finds Samul there, holding a dagger against him. Samul demands to know why Yang defied Yon. Yang says that Yon killed the king of Goguryeo, but Samul says that that was necessary, since the king was releasing Taizong's prisoners. He was clearly under Taizong's influence. Yang argues that killing the king is what started this war in the first place, a war that didn't need to happen. Samul says that regardless, the war did happen, and Yang did not send reinforcements at Mount Jupal, which cost the lives of thousands of Goguryeo soldiers. Yang replies that fighting Taizong in an open field is suicide, and if he sent his men, they would be dead too. Samul calls him a coward and orders him to join General Yon. Yang replies that his duty is to protect Ansi. Just then, a horn sounds in the distance, and it is revealed that Taizong's armies have returned, this time with gigantic siege towers. Chu arrives to inform Yang, and he sees Samul holding a dagger to his throat. He moves to kill Samul, but Yang stops him, saying they need to deal with Taizong first. The siege towers allow lots of Taizong's men to invade at once, overwhelming the Ansi army. Yang observes the situation for a moment, then comes up with a plan. He has his men throw oil pouches and shoots them with flaming arrows in order to burn the siege towers. He does this to all the towers while simultaneously fighting the Taizong soldiers on the wall. After he lights the final tower on fire, he gets hit in the shoulder by a spear. He looks around and sees one of Taizong's generals approaching to kill him. He is saved at the very last second by Samuel, who stabs the general through the heart. Yang passes out. Yang wakes up four days later and thanks Samuel for saving him. Taizong is enraged that such a small army and small fortress continue to defeat him. He comes up with a plan. The clairvoyant arrives at Ansi along with the holy bow and arrow and tells Yang that Taizong sent her to inform him that he has one last chance to submit defeat before Taizong makes his final move. She says Taizong is planning to build an enormous dirt mound, which will be higher than the walls of Ansi. They won't be able to topple the mound and repel his attack this time. Sure enough, the next day the building of the mound begins. The clairvoyant says that she has seen the downfall of Ansi and Yang must surrender, but Yang refuses. Several months pass, and the building of the mound progresses much faster than expected. Samul says they should request reinforcements from the capital, but Yang says that Yon would never help him. Paso comes up with a plan to assassinate Taizong directly before the mound completes. Becca is outraged that Yang is allowing Paso to proceed with a suicide mission like this. 
but Yang says that it is the only chance they have. Becca visits Paso, and he promises her that he will return alive. Paso and his men arrive to kill Taizong, but quickly realize they have walked straight into a trap. This means that there is a mole in Ansi, who informed Taizong of the assassination attempt in advance. Next, a severely injured and near-death Paso returns to Ansi and tells Yang about the mole. He dies, and the clairvoyant admits that she is the mole. She says she has seen the future, and Ansi has no chance against Taizong. They must surrender to Emperor Taizong now, if they want to live. She begs Yang to not continue fighting, but Samul slits her throat, saying that Ansi will not fall. Enraged over the death of her lover, Becca rides into Taizong's territory alone, in a bid to kill him. She manages to get one shot at him, but it only scars his cheek. Then, his men brutally kill her. After Paso and Becca are buried, Samuel decides to ride to the capital on his own to ask General Yon for reinforcements. He tells Yon that the Ansi people are fighting valiantly, and despite being labeled traitors, they are defending Goguryeo from Taizong's army. They need his help immediately. Back at Ansi, Yang sees a bunch of kids playing in the sand and comes up with a plan. He asks the miners of Ansi if they can dig a cave underneath the mound and topple it, and they reply that it can be done. Chu says that the mound will topple forward towards the fortress, so they must capture it right after it falls to prevent a second attack. The miners get to work on digging the cave. Next, the mound is completed, and so is the cave underneath, and the day of the battle has arrived. The miners inform Yang that they cannot burn the columns of the cave, because they are too wet from the rain a night before. They will have to chop the columns to collapse the mound. Yang is concerned that this way the miners would also be buried under the mound, but they are ready to make that sacrifice. They get to chopping. Right as Taizong's army is about to enter Ansi, the miners finish chopping and the mound collapses. Taizong is shocked at what he is seeing. Led by Yang, the Ansi army rushes forward and takes over what remains of the mound. Full of ego and rage, Taizong orders his entire force to attack and bring him Yang's head on a plate. The Ansi army defends the mound by launching arrows and burning wheels on the Taizong soldiers. This goes on for several days and nights until finally, the Ansi army runs out of ammunition. Yang realizes that the only way to end the war now is by killing Taizong. He asks for the holy bow and arrow to be brought to him. Meanwhile, hand-to-hand -hand combat begins between Taizong's and Yang's soldiers. Yang tries to pull the holy bow, but fails. However, he sees his army getting overwhelmed and uses whatever is left of his strength to finally pull and release the arrow. He thinks of Paso, Becca, and the miners while he does so. The arrow flies all the way across the field and hits directly into Taizong's eye, knocking him off his horse. Just then, Samuel arrives along with Yan and his army to help Ansi. Taizong accepts that he has lost and orders a retreat. The war ends. It is revealed that three years after returning home, Taizong succumbed to his injuries and died. Before dying, he advised everyone to never invade Goguryeo. Next, Yang oversees the rebuilding of the Ansi fortress while Samuel prepares to return to the capital. Samuel thanks Yang for defending Ansi and the country, and Yang says they did it together. He tells Samuel he is welcome at Ansi anytime, and then watches on from the wall as Samuel rides off. The end. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.